In this video, we will talk about rationalization of denominators. What does it mean to rationalize the denominator? Basically, we want to get rid of all radicals that may appear in the denominator. In case our denominator consists of just one term containing a radical, first what we need to do is to simplify it, and then multiply the numerator and denominator by the same radical, to match the powers of radicand to the order of the radical. Let's see how it goes. To rationalize this fraction 2 over root 2, we want to get rid of this root 2. So what we do, we multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by root 2. What for? Well, to cancel the root in the denominator. Because root 2 times the same root 2 nihilates the root and we end up with just a single 2. Now in the numerator we have 2 root 2. So the denominator of the resulting fraction is already nice, it's rational, however we can check for possible simplifications. For example, we can reduce the 2's, and the final answer is just a single root 2. As you see, this process gave us a really nice expression with no denominator at all. By the way, it's a good idea to remember that root 2 can be written as 2 over root 2. These two expressions have exactly the same value. Let's see the second example. This time, what makes the denominator irrational is the root 3. So, we want to get rid of this root. Therefore, we wish to multiply the denominator by the same root 3. In order to preserve the value of the fraction, we have to change this numerator in the same way. That means multiply by root 3 as well. Ok, so we end up with in the denominator we have 2 times, and the root 3 times root 3 is 3, so 2 times 3. In the numerator we have 3, and then we multiply root 5 times root 3 is root 15. At that moment we can notice that 3 can be reduced, therefore we end up with root 15 over 2. So it's still a fraction, but with a nice rational denominator. Next, let's look at example C. We have negative root of 3 in the numerator over root of 5xy squared. However, since we're supposed to simplify the denominator first, let's pull this y out of the radical. So we can write y root of 5x only. And then to get rid of this root 5x, let's multiply the top and the bottom by root 5x. Here and there, right? That gives us negative root, 3 times 5 is 15, and x, over, and here when we multiply the two roots, the root will disappear, we end up with 5x times y. So 5xy, and that's our final answer. Now let's look at this cubic root. Again, we may split the cubic root into numerator and denominator, cubic root of 2x squared here, and now we need to ask ourselves what should we multiply the denominator by in order to get rid of this cubic root. Since there is cubic root, we're supposed to have three factors of the same type in order to nihilate the root, right? So 2 was raised to the exponent 1. Since we want to have third power of 2, we want to have two more factors of 2. So after multiplying, we end up with third power of 2, which can be reduced with the index 3 of the radical. What about the x? x is to the second power, so how many more x's do we need? Just one, to make it third power. That's why in this description I said to match the powers of the radicand to the order of the radical. So in the end, we want to have the third power of each factor. Ok, when we already decided what to multiply the denominator by, we have to do exactly the same with the numerator. So multiply by cubic root of 2 square x. Ok, let's see how much will this be. In the numerator we have cubic root of 5 times 4, so it's 20 x. In the denominator we match those powers to 3, therefore after multiplying the root will be gone. And that's what we wished for. So we end up with just 2 and x. Nice rational denominator. Let's see example e. In the denominator we have 4th degree root. 
So we want to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by fourth degree root of and then top up the powers of all factors to the 4. Since we already have two x's, we need two more of them. And we have three y's, so we need one more y to make four y's, right? Then, when we already know what to multiply the denominator by, let's multiply the numerator by exactly the same. Fourth degree root from x square y. Okay, here we go. So in the numerator we have x, fourth degree root of x square y, and the denominator, after multiplying, we can actually take one x out and one y out, so x and y. And now, since this x can be reduced with that x, the final answer is fourth degree root from x square y over y. That's an expression that is equivalent to the original one, but it has rational denominator. And the last one, what do we need to multiply this denominator by? It has to be fifth degree root, and then we need to match the power of a to make it fifth power of a. Since we have one a, we need four more a's, fourth power of a. And b was to the four, so we need one more b to match it to five, right? Let's do the same to the numerator, fifth degree root from a to the four b equals negative fifth degree root from a to the 4b over, and here the reason we chose to multiply by this exact root is to cancel the radical. So we end up with just a and b, a, b. Here we go. In the second case, when we have two terms in the denominator that include some radicals, what we do is we multiply this numerator and denominator by the conjugate bracket. So whatever it was in the denominator, we multiply by exactly the same but with opposite sign inside. Okay, those are the two conjugates. Why do we do that? Because we want to use difference of squares to get rid of radicals in the denominator. We'll see in a second how this works. Here we have an example. There are two terms in the denominator. If we try to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction just by root 2, this root 2 will disappear, but since we distribute the root 2 to each term, the root 2 will appear here, so multiplying by a single root won't help here. The only way that may help is to multiply by the conjugate bracket, so multiply denominator by 1 plus root 2 because then we can use difference of squares and square each term separately, which will allow us to get rid of this root. Okay, since we already know what to multiply denominator by, we have to do exactly the same to the numerator. So in the numerator we can perform this multiplication by foiling, so root 2 times 1 is root 2, plus root 2 times root 2 is just 2. In the denominator, we use difference of squares formula. So we square the first term, which is 1, and then it's minus square the last term, which is 2. Oh, that's really nice. 1 minus 2 is actually negative 1. So in this case, we don't have to even write the denominator any farther, right? Negative 1 can be brought to the numerator and distributed. So that's the same as negative root 2 and negative 2. Could be written this way or could be written that way in a bracket, right? So both answers would be correct. Okay, let's try this next example. Again, we want to get rid of those radicals in the denominator. Since there are two terms, we multiply top and the bottom by the conjugate bracket. In this case, it's root x minus root y, and in the top as well, root x minus root y. Here we need to add another bracket since we are multiplying the whole numerator, right? In the numerator we actually have perfect square of a binomial, isn't it? Because we multiply two of the same brackets. So let's use perfect square formula. Square of the first term is x, then we have a minus, then we double the product of the two terms, 2 times root x root y, so it's root of xy, and finally square the last term with plus, plus y. Everything over, and in the bottom we perform difference of squares. So square of the first term, which is x, minus square of the last term, which is just y. 
And that's our final answer. We can't reduce those x's, neither those y's. Why? Because they are not factors. That's all what we can do here. Ok, let's see the next example. Again, let's multiply the top and the bottom by a conjugate bracket, which in this case is root a plus 4, here and there. Root a plus 4. Ok, so let's see what we have here. This time, if we start with the denominator, we can see better what's going on. So, difference of squares. Root of a square gives us just a, and then it's minus 4 square 16. Oh, well, well, that's good. That's the same bracket as in the numerator, so in this case, there was no worth to multiply through the numerator, because in a factored form, we can see that these two factors can be reduced. And the final answer is really nice. No fractions anymore. It is just root a plus 4. That's a lot nicer than the original expression, isn't it? Ok, let's go to example d. Again, multiply top and the bottom by the conjugate bracket. 3 root 5 minus 2 root 3. Here and there. 3 root 5 minus 2 root 3. Ok, so let's start with the denominator first. Square of 3 root 5, which is 9 times square of the root 5 is just 5, right? Minus square of the 2 root 3, which is 4 times just 3. Ok, in the numerator we can leave it as it is, or we could distribute the 2 to each term. So if we multiply by 2 it will be 6 root 5 minus 4 root 3. Ok, equals, and then what do we have in denominator? 45 minus 12, so it is 33. Ok, and copy the numerator as it was, 6 root 5 minus 4 root 3, and that's all what we can do here. Finally, we want to simplify the following expressions. Here we have a fraction with rational denominator, so that's already good, isn't it? But what we can notice is that there is a common factor in the numerator, which is 2. So we can factor it out, 2, and then in the bracket it's 1 minus 3 root 2, ok, over 4. And now we are allowed to reduce the 2 with the 4 because 2 is a factor, right? So reduce the 2 with 4, leaving the other 2 in the denominator. Therefore, overall, we have 1 minus 3 root 2 over 2. And that's the simplified form. Remember, we can't reduce the 2 with the 4 at that stage, because this 2 was not a factor of the whole numerator, right? Neither the 6. The only thing that we could do here if we understand why, we could reduce this 4 with the 2 and with the 6 at the same time, leaving 1 here, 3 there, and 2 in the denominator. As you see, that's our answer. 1 minus 3 root 2 over 2. However, I would strongly advise that you go through the factoring process before you start reducing, because quite often people make mistake when reducing like this. So I'm going to erase it. And the last example, again, what can we do here? We can simplify this radical for sure. So that will be 10x and then we can pull 20 out of 400 out of the radical and 1x out of those x cubes, right? 1x out, what stays under? Another x. Everything over 5x. Now, we can't add these two terms because they are unlike because of this extra root x, right? However, we can factor, factor the common factor which is 10x. Take it out of the bracket. What's in the bracket? It's 1 instead of the first term and then it's plus 2 root x instead of the last term. Everything over 5x and now we're ready to reduce. So we reduce 5x with the 10x leaving 2 in the numerator. Therefore, the final answer is 2 bracket 1 plus 2 root x. If someone wants to multiply 2 through the bracket, it's fine as well. So the answer could be left this way or that way. Both of them are fine. Okay.